Hey, Steve Mignogna here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1967 Chevy Chevelle Malibu. Now, 1967 was a big year for Chevrolet. The Camaro was on the scene. And you might wonder, did the Camaro steal sales from Malibu? Well, the reality is that Camaro sales accounted for about 11% of all Chevy sales in 1967. Chevelle's 19%, so the Malibu and the Chevelle wasn't that badly hurt by the Camaro's appearance by cross shoppers. But the full-size cars did the lion's share of sales with 62% of all Chevys sold in 67 being full-size cars. So again, as popular as these are today, the full-size cars outsold these three to one. Now here's something to keep in mind. This is a Malibu. It was the Chevelle line started with the Chevelle Deluxe, or sorry, the Chevelle 300, 300 Deluxe, Malibu, SS396, and then Concourse, which was station wagon only. But here's the thing, the Malibu was the one model that was sportier than the others and did all things well. These are available as wagons, two doors, four doors, sedans, uh, four door sedans, and these accounted for 227,800 of those 369,106 Chevelles. So the Malibu was by far the most popular of the batch. One thing you could not get in a Malibu was a two door post, which is something you could only get in the Chevelle. 300 or 300 deluxe lines. Now a lot of times you say 300, Chrysler 300, right? No, Chevelle 300 was a very real thing. The Malibu was the mid-level car. Now this one here is the two-door hardtop, and some would say it's got to be an SS396. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Inside, we can see the uh, remnants of the column-shifted automatic transmission. And uh, this was probably a bucket seat car, almost assuredly. The gap in the dashboard looks like there either was a radio there or radio delete. And to ride that a little further, what we do, uh, a radio delete car will also have very specific fenders with no antenna hole. So, more than likely, this was a radio delete car that somebody snatched the plastic block off plate. And those are being reproduced now, but it's kind of cool. Radio delete Chevelle. Now, this is 1967 American car prices right here. And this gives us uh, basically the breakdown on the Malibu in 1967 and its various options and uh, things that uh, make them stand apart from each other. You see on the left-hand side right there, 300, 300 Deluxe, Malibu, Concourse, and of course the SS396. Notice here the G80 positive traction rear axle, only $42.15. That was retail, $32.55 is what you, the cost was for the dealer. And on the right hand side here, we can see something very unusual. L34 Turbojet 396, 105 bucks. More on that in a moment. Uh, down here, we see uh, the G66 Superlift Air Shocks. And again, specifically on the rear axle to uh, accommodate uh, extra loads, never on the front, obviously. These things were not like hydraulics for a low rider. But again, the uh, Superlift shocks, factory air shocks, were certainly a possibility. Now this one here, uh, we look, and basically, you know, this is a New England rust bomb. Uh, the rear fascia is uh, denuded, but in the trunk, okay. This is interesting, uh, headlight grills. Now these are SS hubcaps, but if you know your Chevys, these are full-sized Impala SS hubcaps. And these are the kind of wheel covers that would not have been seen on a Chevelle, but rather full-size Chevy. So don't get the wrong idea. This is not a super sport. We don't see the blacked out tail, the SS. And again, we'll go to the VIN in a second and confirm that even more. But here are the end caps. And I always love these, the 67 end cap here, always the 66, grill has rounded corners. For 67, it went to a different design. It always looked to me like the 67 taillights and the 66 grill went together. If you know your Chevelles, you know what I'm talking about. But these are kind of interesting. These die cast end caps allowed Chevrolet to use the same quarter panel stamping and give the car a year over year upgrade simply by changing these die cast end caps. That's mass production and uh, smart um, financing and design. Let's go around to the other side. And again, a trailer hitch on this thing, that's kind of kinky right there. That's somebody's add-on, uh, but there's possibly going to be super lift shocks. I don't see the air pump on this one or the inlet uh, for airing up those super lift shocks. But again, this was somebody's trailer towing car at some point. That's an add-on trailer hitch. <clears throat> and again, we have Malibu on this side. So again, it's one of the uh, mid-range models. Again, the most popular, the Malibu and uh, two-door hardtop body. We go inside, and now the VIN will tell us something on this one. We see here, 
136. So that right there, we know this is a V8 small block Malibu. 138 would be super sport. More importantly, the Z, this car was built at the Fremont, California plant. Man, that was a long time ago. Look at the frame of the floor on this thing. Just turned to dust, gonzo. You know, but again, this is a column shifted power glide. Speaking of power glides, there it is right there. Uh, thankfully, somebody sliced away the transmission tunnel to give us a good look at that aluminum two speed power glide. Now, 67 was the first year that the three speed Turbo 400 was possible in the Chevelle, but only with the SS396. You couldn't get the, uh, the three speed with the small blocks. Now, how do we know it's a small block? Well, again, only the 138 prefix SS396 would come with the big block. So here we see the uh, standard fender emblem for the 283. 327 would have 327, and of course, big block car would have a much larger turbojet 396 uh, emblem showing there. And of course, the hood on this thing is a flat hood. So again, no super sport hood. Sometimes people bolt them on, they go right in place, but just a standard flat Malibu hood. Open the hood. Uh, oh yeah, there it is. That's the 283 two barrel. The original engine probably to this car is the Rochester 2CG carburetor right there. Similar to what was used on Pontiac Tri-Power GTOs in the center spot with a choke. And uh, new for 67, the dual circuit master cylinder. Again, a pretty bare bones car. Manual drums on this one, probably radio delete. Oh, that's a power steering. Now getting back to big block engines in Malibus. This is American, uh, the Encyclopedia of American Police Cars right here by Edwin Sanow, a great author. And in here, we get into something that's kind of controversial. On the right, this is a 1969 B07 Police Chevelle. Well, check it out. It says here, the B07 Police package was available only in the 116-inch wheelbase four-door sedan. Power plants for the police version included the 155-horse six-banger, 200-horse 307, 255-350, 300-horse, and the 325-horse 396. Now, listen to this. That's a four-door with a big block. Yes, it happened. Now, ordinarily, and this is 1969, but I've seen records that show it's probable that in 1967, there were some four-door big block police Malibus built. Uh, actually, they would have been Chevelle 300s or 300 Deluxes. So for sure, in 1969, you could get a four-door 396 um, Chevelle as a police car, the B07. So crazy stuff. Now, this one here, again, is a basic 283 two-barrel car. And again, this is something that uh, would have sat right next to a Camaro at the Chevy dealership in 1967 when the Camaro was a new car. People said, eh, Camaro, Malibu, I'll take the Malibu. So somehow, someway, this thing was chosen over a Camaro, which makes some sense. But that's the story of how four-door big block Chevelles did happen if you were a police officer in, in, in the police department. So that's the story of this vehicle here at Burson Auto Wrecking. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow with more Junkyard Crawl.